Seb, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Dan. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, likewise. Good talking again. Um, so I, it, it was interesting in our conversations before because I'm coming off of this conference. I was at Build a Better Agency Summit a couple of weeks ago in Chicago, and it's really uh, it's really heartening and, and nice to hear people like yourselves, you know, veterans at places like Unilever, kind of echoing um, the same observations that I'm seeing and that I heard other people talking about at this conference. Kind of makes you realize that maybe you're not crazy. <laughs> and uh, and the the biggest thing is this prioritization on first party data, right? Which is, if you're not a marketing wonk like we are, um, is, is kind of a fancy way of saying owning your own lists, right? Owning your own your own data. So I, I love uh, to maybe start out with, with learning about that. What, what, why is first party data more important now than it might have been in the past? I think, first of all, it's all about uh, the trust from the consumer to give you the data. So rather than you, know, you as an advertiser going through a third party and then use data that are from other platforms. Uh, in this case, you know, you own the currency um, in, your, in, your, in, in your hands. So in, yeah, the, the consumer come to your website, provided the contact details because they wanted to get a value exchange, whatever you're offering, content, sample, uh, you name it. Um, so in re in exchange, yes, they are giving you their contact details and then you will be able to use it as part of your marketing campaigns. But in this case, um, first of all, it helps in terms of, you know, reducing the, you know, the, 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 the media uh, cost because it's your own data. So rather than sharing the same, let's say the same audience than your competitors, than other people, other, other, other brands in the industry, in this case, it's unique to yourself. Therefore, we know that this is driving, you know, cheaper uh, CPC, cheaper CPM, uh, but also because those people have already engaged with you, you know, you get better outcome when whether you are looking at engagement, whether you're looking at um, sales or return on advertising spend. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And thinking about your your work at, at Unilever, can, would you mind giving some examples of the types of campaigns that you've set up or the products you focused on, and you know what what those shifts have looked like over the last year or so? Um, I think the the, the biggest shift is um, the, the focus of digital more around the, the e commerce uh, space and how can we leverage uh, the, the data in a better way. So again, is if I compare it to you know where we were pre pre pandemic, where of course yeah digital has been used more for okay let's try to drive you know more brand awareness, um, more you know more engagement you know getting our content view. I think um, I can see it uh, on an overall scale so, yeah, if you're looking outside in the industry. So how you know digital is more it's really going into that space where we are leveraging it to drive. A conversion with sales. You can see also the the big players in the UK, like Sainsbury's. In the UK, in the US, you already have it with Walmart, where they are opening their own media uh, solutions for advertisers. Where okay, let's do, let's try to go after Amazon. Have the same solution, offering DSP, offering search. You know, uh, Criteo has already started this, but there's definitely an acceleration into that space, where um, you know digital is driving sales. So. Let's try to maximize it. Right, right. That makes sense. And and so there's been this massive shift to e-commerce. And it sounds like you you actually have some background there. I think you you started at Amazon. Can you talk a little bit about that and what the experience was like and how it's informed what you do now? Yeah, it's definitely a, a good story. So yeah, when I, I started at Amazon, where you know it was mainly selling books <laughs> and then DVD and CDs. Uh, and uh, you know, and then you know, being able to you know, going through through Shell, through Sony, and now through Unilever to see the transition, how the business moved from a book and an entertainment retailer now to this massive beast offering everything that you want, you know, fresh, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, video content, uh, but also the, the cloud solution. So, so definitely, you know. It has, you know, like it has been interesting to, to see the evolution, but also the type of service that you have uh, in terms of, you know, um, as a seller on the platform from an end-to-end -end product, you know, advertising it, 
creating your own content. Back in the days, you know, one of my role was to create content for those uh, book resellers. And now as, a, as, a, as an advertiser, it's a self-service platform when you do everything yourself. So they started to be less and so on, but on the commercial side, of course, you know, uh, this is where, you know, where, where the magic is happening. Yeah, yeah. And, and with that was, how, how much did being there back then and how, how much does, did that help you in your experience now? Is it completely different? Is there anything that you took away from, from being there in the early days? I think the, the two big learning from, from that time is, you know, being afraid of a customer. Everything that you do is customer first. Get the sales in in less than three clicks. At, you know, it's still, you know, the basics back back in the early two thousand, and now you still see other brands are not getting it right. You know, uh, how you know that that's you know they managed to get the basics back in the days, and it's still applicable now. So you know, the, the consumer centricity is definitely key, and you know, if you don't get this. In all the aspect of digital, you know, when it comes to website, be mobile friendly. So all these uh, these are the core values of you know user experience that they had from from the start. And then the second element is putting an ROI behind everything that you do. So you know, I was creating email marketing back in the days. So now you know, um, it's I, I've been in some places where it was difficult from from a marketing team to put an ROI behind. Your campaigns, because of course the, the the sales channels are different. It's difficult to get the data back. But um, yeah, everything here <laughs> behind any decision is yeah. I want to see uh, the money back. <laughs> yeah, I think you make a really good point where there's there's so much more focus on on conversion and this whole this whole loop, right? This whole like yeah. life cycle. When before um, for years, you know, there, there were sort of silos, you'd have specialization for people, right? For the talent that you'd hire, at least my experience working with agencies and stuff has been historically, it was like, you'd hire somebody that was really good at marketing and then they would get a lead or close a deal for, for client. And then, you know, there'd be a different fulfillment process for getting them a product. And now those things are really tied together. And my understanding from, from our clients in the Amazon space is that, finding that talent is really hard. Like finding somebody that can understand inventory plus marketing plus five or six other things that live between uh, those elements is tough. So I guess, first of all, I'd love to hear, do you, is, is that been your experience and, and how have you sort of thought about finding the sorts of people that can understand that whole life cycle? I think um, for, for the last couple of years, I think what, what happened is you had this, to your point, these silos of marketing, sales, of a key account manager working on Amazon. And then, um, you know, not not really uh, working together. So, and this was a miss of opportunity that I saw I saw at Sony. So where, yeah, let's do marketing. Probably, you know, we have a big chunk of money that is going into digital marketing. And then you have all the data that you're collecting from people engaging with your ads, people coming to your website. And then there was this blank sp blank space. And then on the other side, you have the key account managers on Amazon trying to sell more uh, phones, um, but you know how are you linking everything together? And the the the, the line that connected everything was 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 data. So yes, anyone engaging with our ads, boom, let's try to retarget them. By the way, we are selling this product on on Amazon. So 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 yeah, I think. Um, where, where we, we want to go, I guess, on, on that one is, yes, it's uh, the, the silo now. I can see that it's a little bit, you know, less blurry between uh, what marketing is doing, what the key account managers is doing. And also, you need also more commercial skills as well, because Amazon platform have so many opportunities that, you know, if you don't have experience into it, you're not aware. So, you know, such as sampling, such as, uh, you know, even packaging and so on. So, so definitely, um, the, the way how to approach it is, you know, to have different skills together, but we'll be dealing with different, of course, different departments within this uh, big retailers. But at the end of the day, it's important that everyone is aware of what is happening uh, to have regular, you know, reg regular contact or, you know, uh, within the team, but also within uh, the Amazon space. Because on their side, yes, you have their media team trying to sell more media, you have a commercial team, you know, trying to uh, to get more margins from, from, from products. So again, is how are you uh, making sure that everyone is, you know, aligned and, and, you know, and communicating in terms of what is happening, what are the opportunities, what are the weaknesses, and how can we uh, get more sales from, from the platform? 
Right, right. That makes sense. And, and earlier you talked about kind of the shift towards towards first party data and that sort of thing. Would you mind talking a bit more about that and just the sort of projects that you've worked on and you know what what you've implemented in that that regard? So in terms of uh, first party data, I guess um, uh, one of them, you know, of course, uh, that's only it's something that you know we managed to get quite a lot of, of data from you know usage of the products. Uh, from from advertising, so so again is I guess let's say the life cycle of of such type of product is is on a longer term. So again is you have let's say for phone in in, in Europe for instance you are where you are usually on a two years contract. You have a free phone every 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 year. So it's more uh, to make sure how are we uh, using the data at the right time, but also based on the usage of uh, the, the product what type of message or product benefits we want to highlight uh, in terms of upgrading. So these are the information that we were having on our side, but uh, how can we leverage this on such type of platform? So there are, would of course, ways to, you know, to, to build your, your lookalikes, but where, where we see the, 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 the highest value, not only um, in, in my previous role, but also in the current role is in terms of a retargeting bit. So yes, you bought this product, is it, is it better to go in a subscribe and save type of model to get repeat purchase? Uh, but for electronic an electronic type of product where the, the lead time is longer, so how often are we reconnecting? Are we uh, putting the, the message to make sure that after a year, after two years, you're coming back to our product and not to, uh, and don't go to, to Apple or to, to the competitors? Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And and I guess one one thing that comes to mind is iOS 14. You know, let's let's talk about it. Uh, how has that affected things uh, for for you and Unilever? And where do you see it going? I think uh, that's definitely a good thing to give consumers um, more control in terms of you know um, their data. Um, I guess, yeah, it's more uh, working on this. It's more taking the assumption of how much, you know, what is the visibility that we don't get from iOS uh, 14 um, and take the assumption that, yeah, this is X amount of people that were losing because they, they decided not to, to be tracked. So, so again, it's, yeah, it's more, I don't feel, yeah, it's more in terms of a data that uh, as, a man, uh, consume, as a marketer that you see, but at the end of the day, uh, the real impact will be, yeah, um, is it converting? Because of course we'll be getting the sales data from, uh, you know, the, the retailers anyway. So it's more to make, you know, the assumption of, yeah, the data that we don't see anymore. And then, you know, try to, to find a correlation, but, but again, it's you know uh, this is the, the, the beauty of of, in, in the, of this industry is trying to find ways uh, to to all this new uh, legal, but also challenge when it comes to, to privacy and and those regulations. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think that it's it just in in my you know professional lifetime, which hasn't been that long, probably you know since twenty ten or so. Um, I've seen so much platform risk and so many companies, so many industries uh, destroyed, frankly, or transformed because of um, putting all their eggs in one basket, you know, with, with social media, whether it's updates to search algorithms or changes in Facebook's terms. So you have to pay to contact your own community. And I just think that the, the, the risk and reward is not as commensurate as it used to be, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I love your thoughts on that. Quite yeah, quite interesting. It's about the, the, you know, we always, you know, there was this concept of a digital Darwinist, you know, like brands that didn't adapt to digital, you know, like Kodak or Polaroid, things like that. But I think you have also an acceleration within now of the, the digital world where, you know, you have to, you know, to be able to, to, to keep updated about, you know, what's happening, but also to adapt quickly as well. Otherwise, you know, um, we left over but the good thing is you know on a daily basis you have so many new solutions that are appearing on the market you know, i was just reading you know uh, about the cookie-less world following you know uh, the delayed uh implementation from google so you know you can see you know on on ad week you can see on a daily or weekly basis but new solutions out there so so definitely you know i'm very positive about you know, uh, where we're going uh, in terms of, you know, new vendors coming in the markets, you know, technology is just keep evolving. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to see where it's going to go and, and who knows, but I think one thing that's not clear is just how, um, how much dominance a lot of the, these platforms are going to have. It's hard to imagine a world where they, they fade away and they're not uh, dominant in some way, but it's also easier to envision a world in which there's just a lot more little islands and, you know, you don't, you might have to own your audience outside of the, the walled gardens. And, and then you have a whole other uh, rabbit holes of NFTs and, you know, owning your own content that way that we could go down, but uh, who knows? <laughs> But yeah, uh, it's it's interesting because yeah, you're talking about the wall garden. It is you know like uh, just a few years ago, everyone for wall garden we were just saying oh Facebook, oh Google, and now look at the, the, the variety of of wall yeah wall garden or platforms that is available. So, you know, Pinterest massively grew, uh, especially you know in the next last couple of years. TikTok, the best, you know, the most downloadable apps, uh, app, you know, <laughs> out there. So you know, I think definitely. Yeah, the wall garden, there's more and more wall garden nowadays. So that's, yeah. Right, <laughs> lots of little gardens. Yeah, lots of, more more niche and uh, and more yeah. about finding the, the one that's right for you. You know, yeah, I think exactly. the, it, it seems like, and I'm not the only one to observe this. I think Cal Newport's talked a lot about it, um, that Facebook kind of neglected the thing that made, that got it to the dance, right? Which was the network effect. And it was all about the network effects and you joined because your friends joined. But then they got rid of that and made it an ad platform. And now there's a custom news feed that's only partially related to your friends. So it's like, mm -hmm. if that's gone, then what, what's left? <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, it's not going anywhere either. So what do I know? <laughs> exactly. uh, so to, to, to shift gears a little bit, um, I'd love to, to talk about how your work interplays with the agency space, um, given, given that's a large part of our audience. And so, so let me leave it at that. How, how are you, you know, typically working with agencies these days? Um, for, for me, it's important that, you know, um, our success is like success and our failures is our failures as well. So I guess, you know, it, it's making sure that we are all on the same page in terms of what we are trying to, to achieve in the, you know, in the bigger scales. So, you know, business outcome and then aligning with our values um, and, you know, and, and, and treat them as, you know, our partners uh, to, to drive our success together. Yeah, I think, you know, um, in the uh, when when at Sony we were trying to go into the you know move into the e-commerce space is uh, you know we had the, the contract with different agencies that are more linked towards you know your yearly performance is based on let's say how you buy media so trying to you know to now doing the integration with e-commerce do we need also to put a, a, a rust type of target as part of the yearly evaluation so that's a, a, a big headache but but definitely. Um, you know, now that, you know, we are going into more into the, you know, the, the conversion space when it comes to digital. So how are we making sure that, you know, uh, when I'm uh, reaching X amount of for us, X amount of sales, you know, we are all uh, being rewarded for it. So, so I guess, you know, on the procurement side, you know, I, I don't know what is, what will be the situation with Unilever, but again, with the organization, uh, this is where probably uh, the way you are remunerating your agencies will probably have some kind of element of a sales oriented uh, target as part of it. Right, that, that's really important. So some more of, uh, of, of a tie-in to, to an actual ROI when you're doing these, these yearly evaluations with agencies. Um, and if, if you don't mind me asking, like what, what sort of talent have you found it hardest to source? Like where do you see the gaps where you're like, it's hard for us to do this in-house. I wish somebody out of house did X really well. So you mean uh, with agencies or more within the team? In general, yeah, it could be an agency or people filling these roles. Yeah, I think um, I guess it's more about you know being. Sometimes we need to go into a really specialized type of field to get someone to get agencies or in, uh, bringing someone in house. That has been quite quite a big challenge. So sometimes you know where you try to go it's you know we have you have a generalist route of you know an agencies that has different uh different quality or whether you go more on a specialized route where you know you can take the example of all these social media so sort of um, influencers type of um 
uh, providers that are really focusing, uh, we are working with influencers, social media, and then nothing else. So I think it's about having this right balance. Uh, right. So sometimes, you know, when you are thinking about a project, for instance, especially for the long term approach where search is important, as important as social media, as important as influencers. So it's more, you know, about, again, it's working on the strategy, but from the strategy, uh, you know, have all these different pockets of uh, providers uh, that are specialized in X, X field, Y field, and then um, being able to coordinate everything together. So, so yeah, you know, in the past, I've, I've, we had a really good experience of working with different specialty, specialist agencies together, where, yes, we will have you know, let's try to make all the ego on the same <laughs> same level. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're working towards these specific objectives of launching X, Y product. You know, let's try to use your speciality. We, I don't want, you know, you to oversell <laughs> of, uh, you know, your, your content business. You, we have a content agency. So, you know, just trying to, to make sure that, you know, we, we can work together. Um, yeah, it, it has been quite, quite challenging, as I said, you know, uh, now, as you can see, you know, each agency will have a suite of products, but, um, but yeah, at the end of the day, uh, it's, you know, it's about communication that we're focusing on one goal and that we're focusing on your speciality that you currently have. Yeah, that's, I think that'll be really useful to a lot of our listeners. So it sounds like the, the trend is towards specialization, you know, perhaps by, by service, by something yeah. these agencies are doing differently as opposed to, hey, we'll do, we'll do everything for you or one-stop shop, um, especially for a company as, as big as Unilever, obviously. So, so with that in mind, you talked a little bit about these yearly evaluations. Are there certain consistencies that the agencies that are, that are doing things right are doing over and over again, where if you're like, this agency we can't imagine ever letting go for the next hundred years. <laughs> like, what is what is that agency doing right? Um, I think yeah, it's important for all to understand uh, the, the business. So again, is something that I I put a lot of uh, focus on when I'm building teams. Is you know, first of all, love the brand, use the product. You know, uh, as uh, you know, in my previous role is, you know, I had some people that were using our competitors' products. So, you know, I think it's uh, first of all, it's you know about about having this you know uh, passion for the brand, passion for the product that is quite key. And then, uh, of course, is you know um, the type of role of job that we are doing. It's you know not it's not about doing the same thing over and over again. It's bringing some new elements of innovation to make sure that you know, we are moving the Delta year on year, or if we're working on a quarterly basis, on a quarterly basis, on a quarterly basis. So it's seeing this, this evolution that you know, we are one you know, about the brand, but also aligned with a customer, a consumers' um, habits, consumers' uh, behaviors. And, and also driving the you know the, the, the outcome of a business. So I will look at it more um, within those uh, free freelancers, so consumer brands, but also um, at the end of the day, uh, business outcome. Yeah, I, I love that. You know, it's just super simple. Are you do you use the product? Do you know the product? Uh, it's it's simple but not necessarily common <laughs> that that happens. Um, and then that's that's one negative, I guess. On the other side of that. What the agencies that you know you're letting go, the ones that you're like, there's probably been some period of time where like I wish they they would just stop doing this thing over and over again. What does that look like? What are the agencies that are screwing up usually doing wrong? I think um, it's also for for, uh, for me it's about uh, when something is not right. Um, you know, probably I don't have expert the expertise. Uh, the team members are not experts, so I guess it's also. Um, Yes, we have a problem. How or uh, what are we doing to fix it? To fix it, is it? Oh, uh, let's wait six months and then before fixing it or before saying, oh, actually, you know, we've been running a campaign with you know a very low conversion rate. So it's about you know being being agile, being flexible, but also how you know, have a solution in place. So it's not highlighting the problem and then that's it. And or let's see how it will work. So it's about, you know, definitely uh, the way I will be looking at it. It's yeah, let's try to be proactive and get things and rectify the, the issues because this is what, you know, how the you know, relationship with agencies will be or vendors will be deteriorating. It's more, you know, 
if I'm trusting you to, you know, to do a job, let's make sure that, you know, you know shit's happen. So uh, we, we can't do, you know, we can't, you know, there are factors that are out, yeah, outside yeah. of our control, but um, the, the, I think the goal here is, yeah, what are we doing to limit the damage? And if it's, this is not done, yes. Yeah, why am, am I working with such type of agencies? Or that yeah, I, that's a really good point. So speed, speed of rectification, and then also just coming with backup plans to begin with, you know, it's something that internally in our company, we focus a lot more on now than we used to, is just saying like, look, you know, the things that could go wrong, if this goes wrong, here's the backup plan yeah. and laying that out to begin with. Um, so much of the stuff is about managing expectations, you know, exactly. across the board. So I think that's that's a really good point. Um, so kind of kind of getting towards the end of the time, I'd love to just learn uh, this question that we often ask is, you know, what, what are you seeing that's exciting you? What's getting you up in the morning? What are you working on uh, in, in, in the marketing space or beyond these days? I think uh, what is keeping me awake is all well, you know um, what you know all the new things happening in the market. Uh, you know, there's definitely quite a lot happening. You know, especially you know we're talking about blockchain and and all these different uh, things or paying with your Ethereum. Uh, so so yeah, I think you know it's more the the, the speed of of changes in, in this in this uh, in this industry, but also it's about for me it's how I can focus my effort on the right things to get to to the bottom line uh, of, of my of my work. So. Um, you know, and not get distracted uh, by by all these uh, new and shiny uh, innovations out there. Uh, that's definitely you know uh, qu qu quite key as well. And and also, I think it's more looking a little bit further than than marketing. It's you know, um, you know, what can I learn from you know from what's happening on the crypto space? What I can what I can learn? What can I learn from from different elements? Uh, within the, the, the wider digital ecosystem, and I can bring to 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 what I'm doing on a on a on a daily basis. But yeah, I think there's so many things happening right now in, in this in this in, in the in the in the ecosystem, especially with you know begin you know I wouldn't say call them now new entrants anymore, but now you know uh, we're talking about the big four uh, when it comes to to digital advertising. So it's you know Google. Uh, the big Facebook ecosystem, TikTok, and, and Amazon. So, um, so, so yeah, there are so many things going on at, at this stage. To um, it's all also about focusing our energy and, and effort, yeah, on the right yeah. one. Yeah, that's, that's a really great point, and we'll have to hopefully do another episode on blockchain if you end up doing any projects there with Unilever, which will be probably uh, groundbreaking if a company like that <laughs> falls into that space. So hopefully we can uh, have you back on yeah. to talk about that. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate yeah, it. And uh, how, how can people follow what you're up to if it's anywhere they can go? Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Uh, sorry, uh, did, oh, no, sorry, sorry, I was just going to ask. I think I think I lost in the noise. Uh, how can people follow what you're up to? Uh, I think for me, it's definitely LinkedIn is you know a great platform. I'm not that creative to be to be on TikTok yet, so um, <laughs> um, yeah, LinkedIn is definitely the right platform to follow uh, to have conversations. So yeah, awesome. We'll get that linked up. So Seb, really appreciate your time. Thanks again, man. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, take care. Bye.